Hello everybody, OCD Mikey Hi-Fi Guy here again um, for another edition of Audio Autopsy. And what we've got today in front of us is an AC power conditioner, uh, filter, uh, AC power thing. Okay, I don't know exactly. Everybody calls them something different depending on what they do. This one is made by Shunyata Research in the United States. It's called a Hydra Cyclops. Okay, God knows where they got the name Hydra Cyclops and what it has to do with Hi-Fi, but this is the Hydra Cyclops. Okay, um, it is a basic unit, stainless steel lid, um, and uh, a 20 amp Hubble uh, industrial grade inlet. That's maybe 10 bucks. Um, a Hubble output, maybe another 10 to 15. Um, and, and that is, uh, we've got a 20 amp inlet and we've got some 20 amp outlets, uh, here that are, 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 uh, keyed as you can see for 20 amp, which means, uh, you can probably run this, you can run this on a 20 amp circuit. Um, and this is supposed to condition the AC. It's basically, it's supposed to make things sound better. Okay. So first of all, it's pretty robust. It's heavy duty, you know, um, Shall we see what's inside? I already did this to save us time. First of all, we've got a nice stainless steel lid. It's got some Dynamat, you know, basically this is mass loaded vinyl uh, or some sort of poly material that basically keeps, the, the, the intention is to keep the ringing out of here. Um, it could have carbon in it, so it could be uh, absorb this. And I'm not gonna try and explain this because I have no idea what the hell this is, okay? I'm sure Shunyata would do a better job, but we're not, here to try and sell the Shinyata piece, what we're gonna do is look objectively at it, like what the hell is it, okay? Um, and the resounding answer that I will get, <laughs> that I will tell you is, I've got no freaking idea, okay? So here's what I gather from this, from my knowledge in the industry and what I can gather, I'll tell you what I see. Um, it's meant to filter noise off the line, okay? It's meant to make things sound better. What I can see here is a very simple circuit. It's got an AC inlet with a live and a neutral wire. It runs them through two of these cylinders, which is a polymer, feels like PVC. It doesn't look like carbon, but I'm not sure what the material is. It's possible it's carbon fiber, but I don't see any weave in it, so I would probably assume PVC. Um, and it has two Delrin clamps, okay? Delrin's a nice material um, that hold this. So Delrin holds it, it's an insulator. Uh, and it also is sort of resonant, you know, it's, it's pretty uh, anti-resonant. Um, and we've got our ground wire that comes all the way over. It goes to the outside, which is odd. This is just our point. This is the chassis point. So it gives us a double. We ground off the chassis. We got a ground right here to the chassis. This is a PEM nut that just sticks off here. Um, and it's got to be scraped underneath there from this powder coating. Um, and then we come back over and we complete the uh, the ground on the other side at the duplex receptacle. Essentially, it runs the wires through a cylinder of stuff, unknown stuff, okay? Um, this gets into the hocus pocus part of hi-fi. Abracadabra. Abracapocus. Abracadabra. 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 Newport News. But usually, when a company does something like this, they've got a proprietary noise reducing method that includes proprietary minerals or materials, and they don't tell you what it is. Okay. Um, as you know, or you may not know, any sort of electrical wire that carries current has a field around it. Okay. So that means an electromagnetic field radiates from this wire on the outside of it close to the wire. So when you run it through a tube like this, what this means is you're treating the field. You're putting inside here some sort of mineral, some sort of um, material that absorbs that field or it can um, magnetically uh, align the spins of the field so that they align with the, the direction of the current. Um, and, 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 or you can magnetize it with the field. You can, you can, um, permeate the material, which is also about absorbing. There's many different things you can do. 
I have sat and researched materials um, uh, ad nauseum. I have done this. I have grabbed cylinders, filled them with quartz, filled them with, um, with uh, ferromagnetics, filled them with things that absorb EMI, mixed all those things together, tried different mixes of them, and you can absolutely change up the sound of something by doing this. Okay, but it's it's in, in, in my experiments, everything that I used, the materials were cheap. It was all off the shelf, like for instance, for instance, um, silicon carbide, often used called uh, green carborundum, can be used inside here. It is a blasting media. So you get a freaking pound bag of the stuff, 10 pound bag for, you know, 15 bucks of this grit. Um, it costs nothing, but you put it in a tube and run a wire through it. Boy, it's going to absorb electromagnetic field, and it's going to change the sound on the other end. What this piece here is, I'm not sure of. I don't know enough to be able to tell what this is, but this is probably, this might um, bleed off high frequency noise. This is attached, it's got two wires, and it attaches to this uh, duplex receptacle. This would be in probably another one of their noise treatments. We could run that number. Um, it feels like it's a sticker on top. So that's probably their own internal number. Um, there might be, I don't feel any nomenclature on the bottom, but either way, it's, um, it's a piece that goes in there that we don't know what this is. Um, this is just a strap that goes across to help keep everything sturdy so it doesn't wobble. So it's a pretty sturdy build. Um, and the price of this piece in 2012, and I haven't run this serial number to know, but they, this was a 2012 uh, Circa piece was $1,659. Okay, if we adjust for today's uh, inflation, it's 2,000 bucks or 1998. I did it on the, um, the inflation calculator to see. So with something like this, it's virtually impossible to try and, and, and put a value on it. The only way you can put a value on it is to listen to it and see if you think it does $1,600 worth of improvement to your rig. Personally, myself, I feel with tweaks like this, you're better off not putting any of these in, saving all your money um, from all the different tweaks that you put in, and buying a better DAC or buying better amp, buying better speakers, okay? Because this stuff does all add up. You got 2,000 here, 2,000 there, 2,000 there, six, eight, 10 grand easily. And the thing that is a, a, a terrific marketing about these pieces is they're cheap, relatively speaking. They're under two grand, you know, they're two grand or below, and you can sell these things like hotcakes. Um, people will cough up 500 bucks like that for hi fi. They will cough up $1,000 like that, $2,000 like that, because it's not that much of a risk. It's not like buying something for 30 grand, you know, that you have to take a risk on. Something like this is a lot less risky. We can see if Shinyata divulges exactly what's in here, but I doubt they do because people would just copy them. And all the other thing is, if it's something really inexpensive, like silicon or something, like, like, you know, sand, a lot of times quartz sand or crushed quartz actually makes a real difference. And crushed quartz is cheap. It's sand. You can just fill this with crushed quartz. You can get a, a, a difference and you could charge $1,600. You've got maybe a couple pennies worth of sand in there. Uh, I'm not in any way suggesting that there's only sand in here, but I'm telling you, in my tests, sand will, if, if it's pure quartz sand, uh, crushed quartz, it will make a difference sonically when if you did this exact thing with it. Um, so it's kind of, this This is into an area, there's um, umpteen million different things like this. You can take this same thing and you can put it, this uh, idea, this concept, you can put it into fuses. You can mix it into uh, an epoxy and you can paint it on chips. You can paint it on things that go on the wall. You can paint it, um, I mean, you can paint it on anything you want to. Um, it, it really gets into a rabbit hole. What happens typically with this type of product is people listen to it if they hear any change whatsoever. They applaud it as a success and they love it and they want more. Okay, what they don't do, and that's because they're so surprised that it works. What they don't do is they don't ask themselves, did that just make my system sound more organic and more real? What they just ask is, did it become more focused? Did it become more detailed? Okay, and those are not necessarily good things. It gets into what we were talking about in my other videos about having the in-your-face 
um, overly done, overly embellished audio versus natural music. You know, and some of these things, I'm not saying all of them, but in my experience, most of them made it hyper embellished and just not really natural. Um, so I'm not going to comment on the sound of this thing. Um, I'm just going to say personally myself, I stay away from any types of things like this because they are, I'll, I'll tell you why. Because what happened was I started putting them in my rig and I kept putting them in my rig. You need, you put one in, it works. You put in another, that works. You start to go down the squirrel hole. Next thing you know, you got 15 or 20 different tweaks in your rig and you have, and then when something sounds weird, you've got no idea what it is because you've got 20 different points of, of, of flux or 20 different points of, uh, weirdness to figure out. So I have removed them all and just gone upscale in my electronics and I've had better results from saving the money on tweaks and going upscale in the electronics, I get better results and they're more traceable and you know exactly where what's what's happening. When you start to put a bunch of these things in, you don't know what the hell's happening. You don't know where it's coming from. You don't know what kind of quantum this or quantum that is going on. And to me, in the end, they just kind of get shit weird, you know, for me. So that's just my opinion on this. But I wanted to open up the Shinyata Research Hydrocyclops so you could see what's inside. Um, this kind of represents these sort of things that we don't know exactly what they do. They operate on the field. Well, let's look at what it says and see the noise isolation chamber, the NIC, which is probably one of these tubes, um, is a patented Shinyana research device that reduces high frequency power line noise. So it filters off high frequency noise and employs ferroelectric. See, look at that. Ferroelectric substance that actually absorb high frequency noise without any of the reactive negatives associated with transformers and large capacitors as used in conventional power conditioners. So they're saying it, it's passive um, and it's it's crystalline. Or, well, he doesn't say that. It's ferroelectric. So, um, and here's a patent number, 8,658,892. Uh, um, you, can, you can read the patent and you'll find out exactly what's in there and exactly what it does. Um, here is a QRBB. Maybe this is the extra other thing in there. Pat dramatically enhances perception of dynamic. Okay. Uh, provides a local reserve of energy, a column charge that mitigates the inductive reactance of the AC power line without using coils, transformers, or capacitors. It acts as an energy reserve when placed in line. So it's almost like a cap, but it's not. That's patent number 10,031,536. And then ZRCA2000, let's see, zirconium cadmium. Is that, I'm just going off the, the hip um, to say what are those elements. I think that's zirconium and cadmium, if I'm not, if I'm not mistaken. A proprietary compound used in NYX. Okay, so this is where we get to the proprietary filler. It absorbs and dissipates high frequency noise used in power conditioners. So this, it says they're ferroelectric crystalline materials that act on the electric field, just like I was talking about, like I assumed similar to the manner which ferrite um, acts on the magnetic field. So it's, again, a high-frequency filter. Both absorb high-frequency noise. However, this one, do so without the negative sound of, without the use of ferrite in an audio system. And we've got these patent numbers, 8,658,892 and 6,242,689. Go read these patents. Go to uspto.gov. And you can read these patents if you want to find out exactly what's in there because it will divulge because they're patented. So that means they found their happy mix of crystalline materials and then they patented that happy mix. Um, I'm sure there's a handful of other companies that have their own happy mix. Uh, Jack Bybee has one that he used when he was still alive. Um, Synergistic Research has another one. And man, I could patent mine too. You know, I use a certain one. So everybody has their own little mix of stuff. Um, and you can read these patents and read more about them. In case you're wondering what's inside of some of these things, again, um, uh, it's a Shinyata Research um, Hydrocyclops. I do have to say this is put together very well. I've seen some of these things that are put together in a cheap manner. This is not cheaply done. This is done the right way. This is done very well. Mechanically, this is very stiff and sound. Um, this is a nice um, uh, uh, non-magnetic stainless steel lid on it. Uh, and so it has a nice touch. It's well made. Oh, so, thanks for joining and see ya.